So today we're gonna to talk about the king of all lifts, and that is the bench press, of course. And I'm gonna teach you guys everything that you need to know about bench press, how to build the most amount of muscle, which muscles that you are gonna be using, as well as how to shift the heaviest loads. And I'm gonna show you all the best techniques to do exactly that. Step number one, start on the edge of the bench. When you start at the edge of the bench, you gotta lay down, and this is the only way that you can guarantee you're not gonna bump your head on that barbell when you lay down. I'm gonna show you the setup for the powerlifting style bench press. The first thing that we wanna do is slide back and get your head off the bench. The reason why we slide back is so that we can bring our feet back and get our feet in position. We wanna bring our feet back and get onto the balls of the feet. The reason why we bring our feet back is that initiates a thing called hip joint extension. Hip joint extension starts our whole arch process. Extension of the hip is paired with arching. Flexion of the hip is paired with rounding or flexion of the spine, which is what we don't want in a bench press. So bringing the feet back up on the balls of the feet. Now watch this. Up on the balls of the feet, he pushes his heels downwards, which extends his hip even further. You're gonna feel a lot of tension here. And that's what we want in a bench press, is a lot of tension. Next step, grip. In powerlifting, here's a general rule. The wider you go, the shorter the range of the motion but some people aren't very comfortable going as wide as possible. A lot of the best benches in the world don't go as wide as you can. Have a look at these rings on a powerlifting bar. The rules in powerlifting is the maximum legal width grip is index finger on that outer ring of that bar. Now, that might not be comfortable for a lot of you, and if it's not comfortable for you, don't use it just because you're reducing the range of motion. So he knows what his most comfortable grip position is, so that's where he's gonna grab it. Here's the important part. Exactly where on your hand are you gonna be grabbing that barbell? So, the strongest part of your hand is the heel of your hand. So that is, if we have a look here, in line with the bones of his forearm. That's exactly on it. That bone here is the radius, that bone here is the ulna, and it goes straight in line with those. Now here's the problem. Look at where his thumb is. This is known as a suicide grip, which is allowed, but it's not very safe because the barbell can slip out of your hands, and then we are in trouble. So, to increase the safety here, what we wanna do is wrap the thumb around the barbell to stop it from rolling out of our hand. Unfortunately, what that does is it makes it hard to place it on that part of the hand, which is the radius. So what he needs to do is internally rotate his hand so that he's able to place the barbell on at least one of the bones of the heels of his hand, which is the ulna. Now that internal rotation of the hand is known as the bulldog grip. And this is where it gets quite technical. Internally rotating his hands changes the way that we rotate our shoulders. This is where we need to get coordinated. Internal rotation of the hands paired with external rotation of the shoulders. And that is the way that we want to position our shoulders and hands in line for a bench press. Now, we have our feet in place. We've got our grip in place. And now we want to slide into the ideal position to get ready to bench press. A common mistake that I see is people lining up the eyes in line with the barbell. This seems like a very logical cue because we don't want to be so far back on the bench press that we're bumping onto this rack. We need to be able to clear that rack. But at the same time, eyes in line with the barbell is too far down. So slide down so your eyes are in line with the barbell. Look how far his arms are reaching back. That means he needs to travel from here all the way to here, which is inefficient. It's unnecessary to need to travel that far. So what we want to do is come back a little bit further. I like to say barbell roughly in line with your mouth. So eyes behind the barbell to make it so he only unracks that weight as much as he needs to. Now, let's talk about the elbow position and flaring versus tucking and what is right for you. Well, here's the deal. A lot of bodybuilders like to flare their elbows a lot when they're doing the bench press because they say it targets their pecs more, which is partially true. The reason why it targets the pecs more is because it puts the pec at a greater stretch. The pec attaches at the front of this bone here, which is called the humerus. Now, what happens is the more that we abduct our humerus, the greater the stretch is on the pec. A lot of the research supports that there is a lot more potential for building muscle when we take the muscle to a greater stretch under load. Flaring the elbows maximally creates a greater stretch at the pecs. Now here's the problem with this. The weakest position for a muscle is at the greater stretch as well. So what do we do? If your goal is building muscle on the pecs, you wanna use the appropriate rep range to be building muscle, which is not one rep or two or three or the low rep range. Typically, bodybuilders like to be training in the rep range of six to 15 reps, especially for an exercise like a bench press. The higher the reps, the lighter the loads. When you're using light loads from this position, it's perfectly safe. However, if your goal 
is powerlifting bench press and you want to shift the heaviest loads possible and your elbows are flared like this, this creates the greatest stretch for the pecs. So you might feel it more in the pecs. However, it's also the weakest position to be. One, you're probably not going to lift as heavy and two, things break because they're weak. So being in the weakest position for the pecs is not what we advise and that's pretty much where you see most pecs tearing in a bench press. So don't do that. This is where we get a very common cue in bench press, which is called tucking the elbows. The reason we tuck the elbows is because it reduces the amount of tension created on the pecs. And actually, the strongest position for the muscle fiber to be in is in the mid range. So if this is at the greatest stretch position, tucking the elbows slightly puts the pec fibers in the mid range where they are the strongest. So that's why a lot of power lifters like to tuck the elbows to protect the pecs and also to position the pec fibers in the mid range so they can lift the most weight. Now let's talk about the flip side of that, which is tucking the elbows too much. If your goal is to shift the heaviest loads, like in powerlifting competition, I don't recommend you tuck your elbows too much. What that does is it reduces the amount our pecs are involved. When we reduce our pec involvement, we increase the other pushing muscles, which is the triceps and deltoids. So if your goal is to build triceps like a close grip bench press, tuck your elbows a lot. That's an excellent tricep buildup. So if your goal is to shift the heaviest loads, don't excessively tuck your elbows, don't excessively flare your elbows. Hold the elbows somewhere in between and if you're arching your back and pulling your shoulder blades back and down where they should go, the elbows will fall where it naturally will go, which is the most comfortable and strongest position for you. Let's have a look at the elbow position, starting with a flared elbow position. There's a technique called the guillotine press, and that is where you're purposely flaring your elbows as much as possible and lowering that weight like a guillotine towards your neck. Now, this is an exercise that's not strong, so don't use heavy loads here. Use a very light weight with very high reps. Notice the flare of his elbows and notice how high up in his chest he's placing that barbell. This creates a lot of tension on the pecs. Not a very strong movement, not a bad variation. If your goal is purely hypertrophy, do not go heavy here. Now let's talk about excessively tucking the elbows. You probably want to pair that with a closer grip as well. So this is where you bring the hands in and probably grab the barbell roughly around shoulder width or maybe slightly outside of that. Now from here, tucking the elbows all the way in will reduce the tension on the pecs, which increases the amount we have to use our triceps and the front of our shoulders. Great tricep builder, not so great for building pecs, and it's also not the best way to shift the heaviest loads. So now let's talk about elbow position for in between, which is where he's the most comfortable to shift the heaviest loads, which is not so flared, not so tucked, it's just right for him. The angle of the arm is roughly 45 degrees. It could be slightly more, could be slightly less, but it's a very comfortable and very strong pushing position for him. A very common question that I receive when it comes to bench press, especially with an arch, is how would I modify this for a bodybuilder or is this good for bodybuilders? And my answer to that is, well, bodybuilders aren't limited to just one exercise to build any muscle. Bodybuilders use a variety of different pec building exercises and this is just another great variety. So my answer to that is, yes, of course it can be used by a bodybuilder, but it definitely shouldn't be the only exercise you use. However, if I was to tell you the perfect grip position and stance and setup to build the most muscle, this is what I would do. As we just mentioned with grip width, the wider we go, the shorter the range of motion. When it comes to building muscle, we don't wanna intentionally reduce the range of motion. Longer range of motion is more beneficial for creating more muscle. My first recommendation would be to not go as wide with that bench press. Now, how close should we go? The closer we go, the less pecs we use. The wider we go, the shorter the range of motion. So somewhere in between there, where you find comfortable, is right about the sweet spot. Somewhere I like to measure is thumb to that first line that we see on that barbell, which is usually just outside of shoulder width. That's a really nice, comfortable position. The next thing that I would do differently if your goal is to maximize muscle building is I wouldn't worry so much about the arch. Remember why we're using the arch. Two great reasons. One is to position our shoulders in a nice way to press the heaviest weight as safely as possible. But two, it's to bring our chest all the way up high so we can reduce the range of motion. Remember, the goal with bodybuilding is not to reduce range of motion but rather to take the movement through a longer range of motion to increase the muscle building potential. I don't need to bring the feet all the way back. I like to have the feet in a strong, stable position, nice and flat on the ground. That's just perfect. 
From here, we've got our foot position nice and strong. We've got our hand position, which is roughly mid-grip. I still want you to think about extending your thoracic spine, which will comfortably place your shoulder blades slightly back and down, but just not exaggerated as it was in the powerlifting style setup. From here, same rules apply. Grabbing that barbell in the same grip position, which is the bulldog grip, where the barbell is on the strongest part of the palm of the hand, but the thumb needs to wrap around the barbell so it doesn't fall out of your hands. So it's internal rotation of the hands. Now, as we set up, we unrack that weight. Same rule with the elbows. The elbows are directly under that barbell. The elbows are roughly 45 degrees for him, but he's not thinking a huge amount about where he's placing his elbows. It's just the strongest, most comfortable position for him to be in. Now, there's two ways that I like to breathe during a bench press. The way that I like to breathe when I'm lifting the heaviest weight possible is to hold my breath from start to finish, which means before the unrack, I take a big belly of air, hold it, perform the entire set. Yes, even up to a set of 10 reps with one breath, and then I'll exhale on completion of the set. Now this is something that a lot of people find very uncomfortable, which is very fair enough. Here's the more comfortable option. Hold your breath through each rep and reset at the top. Now I'm gonna show you the strongest position for me, which is to hold the breath from start to finish. We're gonna do a set of 10 on one breath. He's in this perfect setup, feet back, on um, the balls of his feet, pushing his heels down. He's got this nice arch, his shoulder blades are back and down. He takes a big breath, holding his breath from start to finish. This breath hold is paired with extension of the thoracic spine. The moment he exhales, his rib cage is going to drop very slightly. When the rib cage drops very slightly, the scapulas might very slightly protract, maybe a millimeter, but guess how many millimeters I want you out of position? That's right, zero millimeters. So when I'm trying to maximize position, I don't want to breathe. A lot of people find too much discomfort holding your breath from start to finish. Now we're going to show you the most comfortable option, which is to take a breath on completion of each individual rep. This is how we do it. Starting up in the exact same position, taking a big breath to brace for the unrack, holding his breath down and up, exhaling at the top. Inhale, hold, down and up, exhale at the top. One more rep. Inhale, hold, exhale at the top and complete. Now let's talk more about the bench press that doesn't involve the lifter, but rather the spotter or the unracker, and that's me. Now here's the skill with unracking. When I unrack, I'm gonna put him in a pretty compromising position. So I need to have a little bit of an understanding about how uncomfortable for most people it would be for me to be standing here with my crutch in the lifter's face for a long period of time. But at the same time, you don't wanna be doing this awkward thing where you poke your butt out because this is a very weak position to unrack the weight. Think about the strongest position in a deadlift. With the deadlift, you wanna keep the bar as close to your body as possible from start to finish, which is the strongest position possible. The moment the barbell drifts away, that's so much harder to be lifting. Same with unracking. I wanna keep the barbell in contact with my body when I unrack, so I can use my strong hips to unrack that weight, rather than my upper body, which is not as strong. So, at some point, I need to have the unfortunate position where my crutch is in the lifter's face, but what we wanna do is have the courtesy to get the hell out as quickly as possible. So when the lifter is getting set up for the lift, I'm out of his way. I don't have my crutch in his face, which I'm sure he'll appreciate. I will wait till he gets in position, wait till he's about to take his big breath to unrack, and then I get my crutch out as fast as possible. Now this is where I spot from, and when he's completed his set, I will re-rack that weight for him. Safety first, obviously, it might be a little bit uncomfortable for a couple of seconds at the most, but have a little bit of courtesy and get your crutch out of the lifter's face as quickly as possible. Here's another thought with the unrack. We mentioned the elbow position. A lot of people talk about the cue of tucking the elbows for the bench press. However, this is a very weak position to unrack that weight. If your elbows are tucked from this bench press, with a light weight, you might be able to drag that weight. It's a very common cue that I hear people say, drag the weight out so you can maintain position. Sure, if there's a very light weight here, or if you have a spotter helping you, that's also fine. But a lot of people are gonna be bench pressing by themselves without having a spotter. So you don't have someone comfortably handing that heavy weight to you, you need to do it yourself. So when your elbows are tucked, it's a very weak position. And when you get to maximal loads, you're just not gonna be able to do it. So what's the solution? Remember what we said about having the elbows under the bar as the strongest position. For the unrack, you need to flare your elbows. Get your elbows under the bar, take a big breath, unrack, externally rotate to tuck those elbows back in position, 
and commence your set. Next tip for the spotters. Let's have a look at the rack that the barbell's sitting on. You can't see it here, but over here, this bench press is made for competition. This lip that the barbell is sitting behind is not very high, and that's by design. It's so that we don't have to excessively unrack that weight to get in position, because a lot of the times when you lift the bar too high to unrack, it takes the lifter out of position. So what the spotter needs to be able to do is to be able to gradually unrack that weight as to not pull the shoulder blades out of position, like so. Taking a big breath to brace, just gently, all you need to do is enough to clear that rack, which leads me to my next point, which is how to gently let go of the bar so you're not dumping that heavy weight on your lifter. Have a look at the way that I do it. Big breath to brace, gently unrack just to clear the rack, gently get my hands out of the position. Here's what it looks like when I unrack by pulling that bar too high, which is what I see a lot of people doing in the gyms. You saw that that took your shoulders completely out of position, which is exactly the position you don't wanna be to perform a bench press. Whether your goal is building muscle or shifting the heaviest loads, that's not the position you wanna be in. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I dump that weight in his hands. <laughs> that was an exaggeration because it's very light for him, but you get the point. When there's a heavy weight in his hands, you need to be gentle, you need to be subtle, and you need to be precise. Let's recap three ways of doing the bench press. Number one, the powerlifting setup. This is the way that we shift the heaviest loads. We want to maximize our arch, pull our shoulder blades back and down, which puts our shoulders in a safe position and also reduces the range of motion with the wide grip, big chest, shoulder blades back and down, and this is gonna allow us to safely shift the heaviest loads possible. Next, how would you do it if your goal was to build the most amount of pecs possible, which is the biggest reason why people perform the bench press, and that is to not create the biggest arch, but still think about extending your thoracic spine and placing your shoulders in a nice, comfortable position. We don't need to bring our feet back to maximize our arch, so I need a nice, flat and stable base of support. So feet directly underneath your knees, nice and flat, nice and stable. Hands, we don't need to go wide anymore. I like to go a mid grip, which is roughly thumbs to the line or just outside of your shoulder width and follow the exact same rules, which is controlling that weight down to your chest and pushing straight back up. Third and final way that I like to bench press is a close grip bench press, which emphasizes triceps development. The reason we use a close grip bench press is to take our pecs out of the equation. Also great if you're suffering from some type of pec injury and you don't want to put more strain on the pecs, take them out of the equation by using a closer grip and tuck the elbows as much as possible. Not a great pec exercise, very good tricep exercise. So as you can see, none of these exercises are better or worse than each other. They all serve a purpose for a very specific goal. Some are to shift the heaviest loads, some are to build the most muscle. Which ones would I use? All of these different variations at different phases of our training year. If you like this style of video, I've also got my squat and deadlift tutorials somewhere up here, click the links there. And if you like this style of learning and wanna get stronger, subscribe for more.